Well, hey guys, what better place to film today's video about the sunshine vitamin than outdoors? We're having beautiful weather here, so I thought why not take the video outside? Vitamin D, commonly referred to as the sunshine vitamin. Up to 90% of vitamin D production in the body is due to ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun. It happens in your skin. It isn't ultraviolet radiation as a whole, however, that does this, but rather a specific subset of ultraviolet radiation from the sun called U. UVB. A lot of people worry, well, if UVB is necessary for production of vitamin D in the skin, won't wearing sunscreen, which blocks UVB, won't that make me at risk for low vitamin D levels, even vitamin D insufficiency or deficiency? This is not an unreasonable question to pose. If you take skin models in the lab and expose them to artificial sun exposure, well, yeah, you will see that sunscreen has the potential to impact vitamin D synthesis in the skin negatively. However, lab studies don't necessarily reproduce real world conditions. They don't reproduce reality. Artificial sun is not the same as natural sun and human behaviors are not the same as lab behaviors. So what does the clinical research show on sunscreen use and vitamin D production? A very recent large study looked at all of the available research on human use in real world conditions of sunscreen and vitamin D levels. Of the 69 observational studies included in this review, 25% of them actually showed that using sunscreen was associated with a higher vitamin D level. 10% of the studies, however, showed the opposite, that sunscreen use was associated with lower vitamin D levels. Why the discrepancy? Well, keep in mind, these are observational studies. They just are observational. They have a lot of limitations. And looking at all of the available studies, there's what we call heterogeneity, meaning a lot of differences. Study designs are different outcomes are different, things that are reported vary a lot in the different studies, and the reporting of vitamin D levels also varies a lot in these studies. Within this review, however, there were two randomized control trials that came from Australia. So randomized controls trials eliminate some of these issues that come up with observational studies. In one of the studies, participants were given either sunscreen or a placebo cream, and they were told to apply it every single day. In the second study, one group was told to apply sunscreen daily to the head, neck, and arms, whereas the other group was told to apply sunscreen at their discretion, meaning whatever you feel is appropriate, whatever you want to do, here's the sunscreen, go with it. Both of these studies showed no difference in vitamin D levels with the different participants. There was no difference between those who used vi uh, sunscreen and those who used the placebo cream in the one study, and there was no difference in the group of subjects applying sunscreen daily to the head, neck, and arms versus those using it at their own discretion. And if you know anything about how people use sunscreen, if they're left to their own devices and they're not super familiar or comfortable with it, they are gonna grossly underapply. Research confirms that time and time again. Most people underapply sunscreen and they don't reapply it. Both studies compared the vitamin D levels between the two groups and there was no statistical difference between the two. So yes, while theoretically it's possible that wearing sunscreen every single day could in fact interfere with your body's ability to properly make vitamin D, maybe put you at risk for low vitamin D levels, the actual clinical data that we have does not support this theoretical risk. And a big chunk of the observational studies at least suggests that people who wear sunscreen actually have higher vitamin D levels. Now, of course, there are some things that might explain that. People who are more likely to wear sunscreen, maybe they are just healthier. They engage in more activities. They are more active. Maybe they eat a more healthy diet. They're more health conscious. They follow more uh, preventative health behaviors such as wearing sunscreen. Another possibility is just because people are wearing sunscreen doesn't mean that they are 100% protecting their skin. Sunscreen is not a shield of armor. Some ultraviolet radiation is still going to get through to the skin. Sunscreen merely reduces your risk of sunburn, sun damage, and skin cancers. And as I said, a lot of people, when they use sunscreen, they under apply it. And it also makes them a little bit too confident meaning they end up staying outdoors in the sun a lot longer. So maybe some of these people who have higher vitamin D levels who are wearing sunscreen, maybe they're just not that good at protecting their skin and they're getting actually more UV rays. That is a real uh, risk with sunscreen is that people get a little bit too confident in their overall sun protection. They stay out too long. They end up overexposing their skin. 
um, sunscreen again it's not a shield armor you need things like sleeves sunglasses a hat shade which i'm sitting under a tree right now a more recent study showed that while on a week-long vacation in a sunny climate individuals who applied spf 15 sunscreen at the recommended amount which is two milligrams per centimeter square they had no evidence of sunburn but they still showed a significant increase in serum vitamin d levels so despite optimal sunscreen usage in this study these individuals still had adequate vitamin d production it's also important to understand that it's not simply a matter of getting some sun exposure raises your vitamin D levels. There are a lot of factors that influence the extent at which your skin is able to make vitamin D. These include your background skin color, where you live in the world in terms of your proximity to the sun, as well as your overall health and your age. The older you get, the thinner your skin becomes, the less capable it is at at producing vitamin D. You've probably heard on social media people hyping up vitamin D. Get your vitamin D levels checked. Make sure you're taking a vitamin D supplement. But truthfully, our thinking around testing for vitamin D levels as well as the need to supplement has evolved quite a bit. And so it's important to keep up and make sure that we are evolving in what we recommend and what we do that follows what the research supports. For many years, vitamin D's benefits were thought to include things like promoting your heart health, uh, warding off certain diseases including multiple sclerosis and of course we've known for years and years and years that vitamin d a hormone is essential for our bone health it's, it's what's responsible for our body's ability to appropriately absorb calcium which again is essential for healthy bones so for years doctors routinely recommended 2,000 international units of daily vitamin d supplementation meanwhile the optimal threshold for vitamin d levels in the blood was changed from 20 nanograms per milliliter to 30 nanograms per milliliter. This resulted in millions of Americans suddenly becoming vitamin D deficient overnight. All the time you hear people saying, why is vitamin D deficiency increasing? Why is everyone low in vitamin D? And everyone points their fingers to the sun and sunscreen, even though we know that people don't really use that much sunscreen, they don't apply it properly. Uh, why, why? You can't ignore the elephant in the room that's simply tweaking the laboratory value that we call vitamin D deficient is obviously going to result in more people being labeled vitamin D deficient. Fast forward to 2011, a landmark study done by the Institute of Medicine showed that vitamin D supplementation had no impact on preventing heart disease, or other serious illnesses. Because of this, the study authors actually recommended backing down on the recommended supplementation amount to 600 to 800 international units per day as opposed to 2,000. They recommended this daily dose with the idea of protecting against uh, osteoporosis and bone disease. But they called for larger randomized control trials to actually address the role of vitamin D supplementation and protecting against bone disease and bone health. Fast forward, we now have the results of that requested study. The VITAL trial was a five and a half year federally funded clinical trial. It involved nearly 26,000 adults. Half of them were men over the age of 50 and the other half were women over the age of 55. Not only does vitamin D supplementation not have any impact on diseases, it also did not result in a decreased risk of fractures in these age groups. This study was followed by an editorial in the New England Journal of Medicine recommending against routine screening of vitamin D levels in adults in the United States. So this is the updated uh, U.S. Preventative Service Task Force recommendation statement for screening for vitamin D deficiency in adults. And they continue to conclude that there is insufficient evidence to support screening asymptomatic community dwelling non-pregnant adults for vitamin D deficiency. In the United States, labs currently run about 10 million vitamin D tests a year. And if you go online, you can search the cost of these tests from different labs. The costs range anywhere from around $30 to $70. So at 10 million tests per year, anywhere from $30 to $70, that is a lot of money going to lab testing which is not a good use of healthcare dollars based on the available body of research. But getting back to the question at hand, does wearing sunscreen actually 
reduce your body's ability to produce vitamin D? The available research suggests it does not. There's no research or day-to-day -day clinical evidence that people who wear sunscreen are getting vitamin D deficiency. On the flip side, we know that unprotected UV exposure from the sun leads to premature skin aging, which includes skin thinning, dermatoporosis, which leaves the skin as you get older vulnerable to tears, infection, poor healing, but it also sets the stage for DNA damage in the skin that leads to skin cancers, and the number of these skin cancers is increasing. Even darker skin types who have a little bit of natural uh, sun protection built in, they are even susceptible to damage from the sun, as well as a variety of skin changes like hyperpigmentation and exacerbation of underlying skin Skin diseases related to sun exposure. So all skin tones and types benefit from wearing sunscreen. So for people who are worried about not getting enough vitamin D from the sun, I have to ask you, why are you worried about this? Raising vitamin D levels by sun exposure has not been shown to lead to any health benefit outcome. While people with poor health may have low vitamin D levels, that does not prove that low vitamin D levels are the cause of poor health. Remember, correlation does not equal causation. As it stands now, the available research that we have suggests that vitamin D levels really don't have any impact on any health outcome. So my question is, why take the health risk of exposing your skin to the sun when we know there's no safe level of UV exposure that won't damage your skin and set the stage for skin cancers and other harmful effects to the skin. Why, why expose yourself to that health risk for a theoretical unproven benefit of potentially raising your vitamin D? If you are concerned about your vitamin D levels, I will remind you that you can get vitamin D from your foods. There are a variety of food sources. Frequently people will ask me, why are you so afraid of the sun? I'm not afraid of the sun. If I were afraid of the sun, would I be sitting out here today talking to you? And those of you who have been following my videos for a long time now, you have seen multiple, multiple, multiple videos over the years of me outdoors in the sun. Yes, I'm always protecting my skin, but if I were afraid of the sun, you would not see me outside. Furthermore, do you ask people who are on a boat wearing a life preserver if they are afraid of the water? No. It's merely a preventative behavior to ward it off against the risk of drowning, which is a real risk uh, with being on a boat. The other argument I hear is like, well, you know, sun is natural. Of course it's good for you. Mm. Water is natural, ice is natural, fire is natural, and wind is natural. We can all agree that these natural things can in fact harm and or kill us. You can burn, you can freeze, you can drown. And last I checked, it's not a good idea to hang out in the middle of a tornado. So just because it's natural doesn't mean it's 100% safe. Taking caution does not mean fear. I'm not gonna tie a 200 pound weight to my leg and jump in the ocean. It's just common sense. It's probably going to lead to harm. It doesn't mean I'm afraid of the ocean. It doesn't mean I'm afraid of the water. Well, you're ignoring all of the health benefits of sun exposure. Am I though? Why would you assume that these sun protective behaviors negate the benefits of sun exposure? I mean, am I not getting the benefits of sun exposure? by being out here just because I have sunscreen on, just because I'm sitting in the shade, just because I have long sleeves on, um, just because I'm not gonna stay out here all day. Am I not getting the benefits of sun exposure? There's really no research to support that argument. So why would all the medical authorities suddenly be uh, cautioning against routinely screening otherwise healthy adults for their vitamin D levels. What's the harm in just checking? Well, as I already pointed out, it is pretty costly to just run these vitamin D tests without any known benefit of what we're gonna end up treating. Second of all, there is harm. There's harm in giving someone a diagnosis they don't have. Doctors are always being criticized as giving out diagnoses left and right, as over-treating, over-prescribing. This is a step in the right direction away from over-diagnosing vitamin D deficiency or vitamin D in insufficiency. So the risk of screening is a risk of labeling a patient with a disease they don't have, calling someone sick when they are in reality healthy. And the, the downstream risk of that is then giving them a treatment that they don't need and that could potentially cause harm. In this case, it's high doses of vitamin D supplement. Now, vitamin D supplements are by and large safe 
in majority of people, low risk of adverse effects. It can have harm, you can develop vitamin D toxicity from taking very high levels of vitamin D. So take home points from this video. You can enjoy the outdoors while simultaneously protecting your skin from the sun. It's not going to put you at risk for vitamin D deficiency. Furthermore, what are you chasing? Why are you chasing this number? This is the same trap people fall into with their weight management where they just get hyper fixated on a number on a scale, ignoring the fact that their weight may be going up a little bit because they're building muscle while simultaneously losing fat. This is the same thing. Why are you so laser focused on a lab value? Why even check it in the first place if you're otherwise healthy? What is it gonna change for you? All right, guys, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. I hope you guys are having a great one wherever you're at. On the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video all about the truth about mineral sunscreens where I debunk a common myth about mineral sunscreens. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.